working smarter, not, not harder, harder yes. right? So just as I mentioned with Paul Mitchell, he would go to another product that needed a bottle. He didn't go to make cameras or he didn't mm -hmm. go to make a hard drive. He went to another product that is a bottle. Plane tickets to your favorite city. I got plans for your ring, for your finger, and it's sitting pretty. I got bands for your story, for your friends. That's the smell from your face. Got you moving in my place, yep. What up, Globetrotters? It's Jay Blaze. And Vanessa. And we're back with another episode of... Mr. and Mrs. Global. The, the podcast. podcast. <laughs> so yeah, today we're going to talk about balancing entrepreneurship and family. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, content creators, and people that start businesses have a hard time balancing their family. So yeah, we should just exciting. get right into it, right? So Vanessa, tell us a little bit about how the transition from being an employee to an entrepreneur has been and how you've been able to balance and explain it to your family and friends. First of all, the most difficult part was the different structure because you are in your old pattern and you have a lot of security mm -hmm. and you really have to take your time to reprogram your mind to get in this entrepreneur mindset and be your own boss and structure your daily life, your work mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm. then it's important that you also learn to, to take the responsibility. There's like no boss that does it for you. Yes. When something goes wrong, you're responsible, it's responsible for, it. for it. Yeah. Yes. And my parents are both, my mom was self-employee. My dad was the doctor, but he wasn't self-employed. It was definitely difficult to explain them what I'm doing now. And because I didn't understand it at the beginning, they were like, wow, you have such a good job they have like the mindset of of safety or like a like a regular job is safe but this is not always the case right? yes definitely and that's what we definitely want to talk about today so what is the schedule been like since starting in the entrepreneur space i mean i can definitely explain my uh, experiences but i want to start mm -hmm. with yours so in the beginning transitioning to kind of the middle what has it been compared to your old schedule you definitely work at the weekends. You work uh -huh. a lot because well, we're also building something up. So there is definitely less free time, which not means that you don't have to take care of yourself. That's a very important part to take care of yourself, to be good in the long run or like to, uh -huh. to see it in the long run and don't burn out, of course. It's super interesting because me as an entrepreneur who's built several successful businesses, I always know at the beginning it's gonna be a little tough because there are certain things you can work smarter, not harder, but there are certain things that are gonna require your physical attention and labor, such as photo shoots, websites, tax documents, uh, business documents, incorporation. Those are things that have to be done in the beginning and they cannot be skipped over while you're building the foundation. So when you're transitioning through your entrepreneurship journey, things in the beginning will be a little bit more stressful, a little bit more rough, a little bit less secure, and a little bit more hectic and tiring, mm -hmm. you know, but as you transition towards the middle and hopefully the end of entrepreneurship, which a lot of people never get to, and I'll explain that shortly in the middle, there should be a little bit more stability, more, a little bit of process that you will come to appreciate in a schedule that you can kind of depend on. Can you give a time frame, or and is it depending on the business? It, it depends on the business mm -hmm. It's definitely different for each business. I would say the first year yeah. of of the business is mandatory. If you're not gonna put in a year into the business, you probably just shouldn't start. It's just not for mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. because you're not gonna see any results or any consistency for a year because it's gonna take, you know, each quarter, usually businesses operate on quarters, four months at a time, and it's gonna take each quarter to see what happened in the last quarter, what are the adjustments that are being made, and you're really not gonna see any results or any data for the first six months. The second six months, you'll see a lot of data and a lot of things that you can change. After the first year minimum that you have to put in, then you'll probably start to see a lot of things uh, take shape, you know, and then the second year, you can probably just hit the gas most of the time. And then I wanna also talk about the end of entrepreneurship. I know a lot of entrepreneurs who have companies and they create companies for themselves, but a lot of times they actually just create jobs. What you should be doing 
is creating a company that can operate without you that can be sold. Like let's say something happens to you, you're sick. You should be creating processes and situations that can, you know, live without you. You shouldn't have to be there all the time. Otherwise you just have a job. You know yeah, I mean? that's our goal to create much as passive income as, as possible. possible. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. So what's the difference do you feel in your old job between a mediocre employee, meaning someone who just goes to work, goes home, has a lot of extra free time and a high performing employee. A high performing employee brings revenue to the company. Yeah. They're an asset to the company. They're well respected with the decisions mm -hmm. and they really bring a lot to the table. Have you experienced the difference between mediocre employees and high performing employees? Yes, I could say is that a high profile employee probably will mm -hmm. be a better entrepreneur because if you're not able to be in a company and put the work in, it's just the wrong mindset because when you on your own, you just have to do it. Like there's nothing that, that catches you. You're yes. just on your own and uh -huh. that's when you're going to fail. Yeah. hundred percent. I think uh, no money. So you just, you get out what you put in. That's is what, what you're I mean, trying thanks. to say. <laughs> and it's super interesting because the topic, which would be the next topic that we're going to talk about is job security. When you're a mediocre or low performing employee, you actually are usually probably the first one to go, meaning you're not a specialty employee or you do not bring revenue to the company. You know, you don't bring much value to the company. You show up, you go home, you do your job and you have a lot of time mm -hmm. to hang out with family and friends as a consequence, mm -hmm. you know? But when you're a high performing employee, you bring a percentage of revenue to the company. You bring ideas, assets, and you move them forward and you bring a lot of value to the company. So you may have to put in more effort in longer hours yeah. and things of that nature, which ultimately could result in job safety because if they're looking to lay off people during a recession or any instances in the company, then they're obviously going to lay off the person who's not bringing the company revenue because it, any job, uh, I say senior management position up mm -hmm. should be bringing the company some type of revenue in mm -hmm. any company period. And if they don't, they're probably not very safe for very long. The difference between that and like self-employment security is you're never really secure in a company uh, being self-employed until you develop a process that you can exit from. I was giving her a example of Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell developed his hair products. Mm -hmm. And once his hair products were fully developed, they had he had a reputation, his name, they were generating money. He had a school even, you know, for hair. He has his products in all kinds of stores. Lot, yeah. He then moved on to building the same kind of businesses in the process and he made Patron. You know, he was one of the celebrities who started in the alcohol business. He was the pioneer of that, which most yeah, people I, and may I, not know. I could imagine that his friends and family would be super confused mm -hmm. because first he does the hair products and then he totally switched the niche to alcohol and everyone probably ask why why are you doing this now did the other thing not work but that's like typical for an entrepreneur yeah no it's typical for an entrepreneur but that's how you provide yourself safety you diversify but there you diversify Seven sources of income yes and you, and you diversify and you keep the products and the knowledge that you use from the first business and you apply it to the second business i'll give you an example both are liquids in a bottle True. So the design of the bottles, which are super important yeah. matter to sell it and the contents of the bottles. So alcohol has to be mixed, has to be procured and coordinated in order to taste good and then put in a nice bottle, which is packaged and sold the same thing with shampoos. So they're not as different as you would think the process of making sure that the product for your hair is great. Then putting it in a bottle with great packaging to sell it is almost exactly the same, except one is in a liquor store and one is in a beauty salon. That's yeah, the that's only correct. different. So I break it down for you. So the key techniques would be to start out with have a good liquid, which is a good product for the hair or to yeah. drink and have a good bottle so that the consumer can choose it. I'm sure there's so much more to it, yeah. but those are the basics that people with the naked eye would see that they're so different, but they're not. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. also was smart of him was to 
take the profit from the first business mm -hmm. and put the money reinvested in the next business yes. instead of like spending it for i don't know yeah no i right? mean that brings us to so, our next point yeah. reputation and revenue matter so mm -hmm. although you might not have a big reputation in the alcohol business you probably have a big reputation in the bottling business, right? Yeah. So if you look at Patron, which is one of the first alcohol bottles that would sell hundreds of millions of dollars, et cetera, et cetera, celebrity driven, the bottle was amazing. Mm -hmm. it, all of these companies now still wish to achieve that bottle. But if you also look at the Paul Mitchell bottle, that's the reason why all of the big shampoo brands changed their bottles Patron and made is them more like stylish. 8, 000, one bottle or no, more? no, they do have a patron bottle for eight thousand yeah, but they have a 45 like 50 dollars but they have a premium bottle yeah, too and that I, you it's can limited buy. <laughs> I, I saw that somewhere. yeah they have yeah. different levels of patron but that brings me to the point where revenue and reputation matter even mm -hmm. if it's 10 percent of a reputation people can doubt you but they never can slight your reputation when you're carrying one thing to the next. You're carrying the process, the hard work, the entrepreneur mentality and the winning mentality. It's the same if a coach goes from one team to another team, he's bringing his process with him. He's bringing yeah. his willing mentality with him. And if he puts in the same hard work, he's going to have a little bit more chance than someone just starting. Yeah, it's a different product, but it's the same route that you have to take yes. all the way. And once you figure this out and being successful and also builds up confidence and yeah. So smart. that brings us to our next point, working smarter, not, not harder, harder yes. right? So just as I mentioned with Paul Mitchell, he would go to another product that needed a bottle. He didn't go to make cameras or he didn't mm -hmm. go to make a hard drive. He went to another product that is a bottle. And like you said, he reinvested his profits most likely and probably got other people involved and went to something similar. Yeah. You know, I've kind of broken it down. That's the same what we do with our content. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, when we started, for example, uh, we do a lot of TikTok. We would shoot five videos a day or yes. like, I don't know, it was all over the place. And nowadays we say, no, Monday is our filming day. We get ready and yeah, we shoot as much videos as we can this day. 100%. And it's so much more effective. We save so much more time and we bundle the tasks. It's not all over the week. And then we have our days where we shoot the YouTube videos. Then we have days mm -hmm. where we shoot the podcast. And yeah, we always sit together and reflect the week. Was it productive? Mm -hmm. Where can we get smarter with our time? You can get the time back and uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, in the beginning through all these processes, you know, uh, family and friends, yeah. I think a lot of time don't know the differences in the task in each step, you know, mm -hmm. each step in, in each different process will give you more time back to yourself. So at the beginning, think of 100% of your time going into the business and then slowly but surely you're buying five to 10% yeah. back. So hiring a team, you get 5% of your time back. Coming up with a great process and a great product, you're getting 5% of your time back. Marketing the product and building your reputation and your revenue, you're getting 5% back. And slowly what happens is over a few years is you get your freedom and you get money as long as you don't give up or something doesn't go wrong. But those are the general things, which brings us to the next top. Even if it goes wrong, don't give up. There's yes, so many 100%. crazy and successful stories about entrepreneurs who failed a bunch of times and they just learned more on the way and they then didn't give up. And at the end, they were so successful. I think a lot of people underestimate you can take away profits, but you can't take away the knowledge, yeah. the person. So that's why most people who win may be second or third time entrepreneurs because they have the knowledge that they're carrying with them from the first and second business yeah. to make the third business, you know, which brings me to my next point. Always take, take a self millionaire, the million, take it away mm -hmm. from him and he'll he go will, get it again. Yeah. And probably mm -hmm. even more money because he learned on his way. He knows the journey and knowledge is your most biggest value. A hundred percent. I mean, in the process of building, there's definitely fundamentals to business and there's mm -hmm. tricks to it. And there's, you know, you develop a skill set and you know what you're doing in developing a product that'll work mm -hmm. and developing a technique that'll work and a process that'll work. And that brings me to the next point of reinvesting your profits. Why would people reinvest their profits instead of look for security? Because if you reinvest your profits, you can definitely 
speed up the yeah. process. And when you speed up the process, it gives you an opportunity to one, grow faster, but two, build some security for yeah. yourself or for your company because things can and always do change. So if you're in a period of time where something is working, you should really capitalize as much as possible and then also build an exit or a door to pivot. To like, okay, I can do this similar to how we do music mm -hmm. and then we do long form videos. The long form videos need music in them oftentimes. So we can just go ahead and put the music that I made yeah. into the videos. And also these days, a big thing is products, you know, brand deals, commercials, aren't as popular on TV, they're more popular on social media. So us perfecting the technique of making videos really is helpful to a big brand that needs to market their product very organically. Yeah, and not know? only your music, we also wear haters that back clothes. That's yes. our uh, non-profit anti-bullying campaign. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like so it on a microphone. Yeah, too. so it provides a lot of extra visibility yeah. just by doing the same task, you yeah. know? So we're really bundling two or three things into one situation, super organic, because you know, these days people don't like ads, they don't like to be sold to. Yeah. They really want to feel your product and they want the transparency yeah. and learn the story. So I think we pretty much covered everything, don't you think? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, if you guys wanna see more, definitely subscribe, drop a comment, and we'll come back with another episode. We wanna do more of these podcasts to inform yeah. you guys, you know, of all the little things that we're learning on our journey. Yeah, maybe we can do a part two about entrepreneurship because it's huge and let us know what you would be interested in. Let's go, comment below. But until next time, we're Mr. and Mrs. Global and we're out. Bye. <laughs> Plane tickets to your favorite city. I got plans for your ring, for your finger, and it's sitting pretty. I got bands for your story, for your friends. That's a smile from your face. Got you moving in my place. Yep. Plane tickets. To